Hi, I'm David, and this is the Biology Classroom. This is a paper discussion video, so get ready with this paper, and let's go through the questions and answers together. 0.1 millimeter is equal to 100 micrometers. 40 eyepiece division is 100 micrometers, so each division measures 2.5 micrometers. 4 eyepiece divisions are 10 micrometers, so the answer is A. Prokaryotic cells typically range in diameter from 0.1 to 5 micrometers. A is too small, while C and D are too large. Nucleic acids include DNA and RNA. In one, the cytoplasm contains mRNA as it moves out from the nucleus after being produced. Two is the rough ER. Ribosomes are composed of proteins and RNA. Three, the mitochondrion, contains circular DNA. It also has 70S ribosomes. Introns are the non-coding sequences of DNA or RNA within a gene. Bacteria generally have very few or completely lack introns. Telomeres are protective caps of repetitive DNA sequences located at the ends of chromosomes. They have circular DNA, meaning that there are no ends in their chromosomes. The template strand is the strand of DNA used to synthesize a complementary RNA molecule during transcription. Any cells that carry out the process would have it. A capsid is a protein coat that encloses the genetic material of a virus. A single water molecule can form a maximum of four hydrogen bonds with other water molecules. This is because each water molecule has two hydrogen atoms, each capable of forming a hydrogen bond with another water molecule's oxygen atom. The two lone pairs on the oxygen atom can form hydrogen bonds with the hydrogen atoms of other water molecules. To determine if an amino acid has an overall charge, we need to look at the R group. In this case, aspartate and lysine have positive 1 and negative 1 charges at their R groups. The carboxy and amide groups have charges too, but they neutralize each other. This triglyceride contains a total of 56 carbon atoms. Minus out the 3 carbons in the glycerol part, we are left with 53 carbons in the fatty acid tails. Since 1 and 3 have 17 and 18 carbon atoms, 2 is an 18 carbon fatty acid. They are 4 carbon-carbon double bonds. 2 are found in fatty acids 3. So, fatty acid 2 has 2. Fatty acids with carbon-carbon double bonds are said to be unsaturated. Quaternary structure is described here, as we know that there is more than one polypeptide in a collagen molecule. It also identifies the amino acid that is found regularly in the sequence, which is the primary structure. The information does not include a description of the alpha helix or beta pleated sheet formation in the protein, so the secondary structure is not included. It also does not mention the interactions between the R groups, which are responsible for the protein's 3D arrangement. Delton is a unit of measurement for molecular mass, particularly for large molecules like proteins and nucleic acid. They are two alpha and two beta globin chains, and four hem groups in a hemoglobin molecule. So the mass is 64456 deltons or 64.5 kilodeltons. First, transcription is needed to synthesize mRNA from the gene that codes for the enzyme. It occurs in the nucleus. Then, translation at ribosomes take place to produce the polypeptide. Rough ER will package the polypeptide in a vesicle and transport it to the Golgi body. It is modified and packaged into a secretory vesicle before being released from the cell via exocytosis. The x-axis is for the independent variable, so A is wrong. The substrate concentration should yield a graph that increases and then levels off. B is incorrect because the y-axis is another independent variable. Statement 1 is incorrect. Km is inversely related to enzyme affinity for the substrate. A high Km value means that the enzyme requires a higher concentration of substrate to reach half of its Vmax, indicating a low affinity. Statement 2 is correct. While it is not a direct measure, Km does give an indication of how strongly the enzyme binds its substrate. Statement 3 is the correct definition of Km. A is wrong because the diagram shows that the protons move down their concentration gradient. It is facilitated diffusion, not active transport. B is correct. In both cases, a proton gradient has been generated. 
so they only have to passively move through the co-transporter protein. C is correct for this diagram, but incorrect for sucrose. In film tissue, protons and sucrose move together from the apoplast into the companion cells. D is wrong. The co-transporter proteins facilitates the diffusion of protons, a process that does not require energy. 1 is true. All enzymes are globular proteins. 2 is incorrect. If they have the same tertiary structure, they would have the same active sites. It would be impossible for them to bind to different subjects as the diagram suggests. All proteins are made up of C, H, O, and N, so 3 is correct. Slide 1 indicates that the cell have burst. This means the water potential of the salt solution is higher than that of the cell cytoplasm, leading to water moving into the cell by osmosis. So, C is incorrect. In slide 2, water leaves the cell by osmosis, causing them to be crenated. This indicates that the water potential of the cell is higher than that of the solution. Only B describes this correctly. B is the correct definition. Chain of proteins do not change shape while carrier proteins do. A and D are wrong because they state that only one type of transport protein is possible. Facilitated diffusion is a passive movement. No energy is required. Stem cells can produce new cells for tissue repair and regeneration. It does not repair cells. Cell repair refers to the processes by which cells fix damage to their components, such as proteins, DNA, and membranes, to maintain cellular health and function. Stem cells in the bone marrow can divide and specialize into various blood cells, including phagocytes. The cell on the left shows metaphase, where the chromosomes align at the equator of the spindle. The one on the right shows late anaphase or early telophase, as the chromosomes have arrived at the opposite poles. X should be in anaphase, where the sister chromatids separate and begin to move to the opposite poles due to the contraction of spindle fibers. This is correctly described in option D. A describes metaphase, and B is about prophase. C does not take place in mitosis, as homologous chromosomes would not pair up. This option describes metaphase 1 in meiosis. X is the distance of the centromeres from the poles of the spindle. In anaphase, centromeres divide and begin moving to the poles, resulting in a decrease in the distance between them. The poles should be further apart as mitosis proceeds. Therefore, A and B are incorrect. Y is the distance between sister chromatids. Before centromeres divide, it does not exist. Afterwards, the chromatids move toward the opposite poles, leading to an increasing distance. All four options are correct about the form of DNA. The sister chromatids start to separate, and they are in the condensed form called chromosomes. Mitosis occurs in eukaryotic cells, so the DNA is always associated with histone proteins. The cell surface membrane would never break during the process. Only the nuclear envelope breaks now. Thymine and cytosine are pyramidins. They only have one ring, so the answer is C. One and four have two rings. They are the purines. The sequence belongs to a DNA molecule, while the table shows codons in mRNA. Therefore, you must first determine the complementary sequence of the gene. Then, you can use the table to find the amino acids it codes for. In translation, an mRNA is used to synthesize a polypeptide. It occurs at the ribosomes, and the amino acids needed are carried to the sites by tRNA molecules. DNA is involved in DNA replication and transcription. Free nucleotide bases are required to form new DNA molecules during DNA replication and mRNA during transcription. RNA polymerase is the enzyme needed for transcription. The cell in the photo is mostly emptied in the middle and has peripheral cytoplasm. There is an end plate with pores between it and the next cell. These are the features of the phloem sieve tube. The cell wall of xylem vessel contains lignin. It provides mechanical support to prevent xylem vessels from collapsing and is mostly impermeable to water. Cellulose is the main component in the cell wall, but it is permeable to water. While suberin is impermeable to water, it is a key component of the endodermis, particularly in the Casparian strip. It is not a typical component of the xylem vessel walls. Plant cell walls do not contain collagen. 
the sinoatrial node sends out the wave of excitation. It is located near the right atrium, so the impulse will first travel in the atrial wall. Then it is relayed by the AVN, causing a delay in the transmission. Lastly, it travels down the bundle of heat in the septum and spreads through the ventricular walls in the perkine tissue. P is when the ventricles start to contract. The AV valves must close to prevent a backflow to the atrium. R is when the diastole starts. The pressure in the heart decreases. Semilunar valves close to prevent a backflow from the aorta and pulmonary artery into the ventricles. The ODC of cats is on the right of the human's ODC. At the same partial pressure of oxygen, their percentage saturation is lower. This means their hemoglobin has a lower affinity for oxygen. So, A is wrong. B is incorrect because a lower affinity means a lower ability to pick up oxygen. C is the correct option. A lower affinity causes oxygen to be dissociated from the hemoglobin more easily. D cannot be the answer because the graph does not show us what the Bohr effect is like for the two organisms. A is incorrect because the binding of the oxygen molecule changes the shape of hemoglobin slightly, causing the next binding to be easier. This is called the cooperative binding. B is correct. Each hem group has an iron ion that can combine with one oxygen molecule. C is wrong for the same reason as A. D is not true because each binding should make it easier for the next one, not more difficult. A is the answer. Squamous epithelial cells are flattened, resulting in a short diffusion distance. B and D are wrong as goblet cells and cartilage are found in the trachea and bronchus, not in the alveoli. Cilia are present in the trachea, bronchus, and some bronchioles. It is not found in the alveoli. When X increases or W decreases, the concentration gradient will be steeper. Diffusion rate increases when there is a greater concentration gradient. The rate will also increase if the distance of diffusion, Y, reduces. D shows a steep concentration gradient and a short diffusion distance. The bronchus has cartilage to provide mechanical support and prevent it from collapsing. Ciliated epithelium has cilia that sweep mucus away from the lungs. This helps to remove particles trapped in the mucus. Smooth muscle helps to regulate airflow by changing the size of the airways. Alveoli recoil to expel air from the alveolar space. This causes the carbon dioxide-rich air to be continuously removed, allowing more oxygen-rich air to enter during the next inhalation. The continuous supply of deoxygenated blood ensures that the concentration of oxygen is always higher in the alveolar space than in the blood, and the opposite for carbon dioxide. The percentage decrease is calculated by the final minus the initial divided by the initial times 100. The first treatment uses antibiotic on top of rehydration therapy, resulted in a further reduction compared to the second treatment, so we consider this as the final value. It shows us the effect of antibiotics. It is about 39.6%. Penicillin causes a weaker cell wall in bacteria by preventing the cross-linking of peptidoglycan molecules during cell multiplication. B correctly described this. It does not catalyze nor inhibit the digestion or hydrolysis of the cell wall material. A is also incorrect because it does not affect osmosis. The percentage increase is calculated by the final minus the initial divided by the initial times 100. The answer is 650%. The use of antibiotics is for treatment, not prevention. Moreover, using them as a preventive measure may help other organisms in the body to develop antibiotic resistance. C describes passive immunity. Once the antibody concentration decreases, the protection is gone. D describes vaccination. It stimulates the immune response in the infant, causing the development of memory cells, which leads to longer-term protection. The extensive network of rough ER shows that the cell has a high rate of protein synthesis. Judging from the circular and large nucleus, it is a lymphocyte. A lymphocyte that secretes a lot of proteins is a plasma B cell, as it is specialized in antibody production. A describes a lymphocyte. C is wrong because 
white blood cells do not need to secrete antigens. D is a phagocyte. Neutrophil has a multi-lobe nucleus and monocyte has a horseshoe-shaped nucleus. A is the answer because B lymphocytes first carry out clonal expansion by mitosis. Then, some of the cells undergo specialization or differentiation to form plasma B cells. B requires protein synthesis. C is wrong because neutrophils are specialized cells. They can no longer divide. Furthermore, mitosis has nothing to do with their ability to engulf pathogens. D describes clonal selection. A B lymphocyte is fused with a myeloma cell. It is a cancerous cell that can divide infinitely. This enables the hybridoma cells to undergo mitosis when grown in culture. An antigen is a specific molecule, usually a protein or glycoprotein found on the surface of a cell or other substance that can trigger an immune response. In immunology, a clone refers to a group of cells descended from a single cell. A macrophage is a type of white blood cell that engulfs foreign particles and dead or damaged cells through a process called phagocytosis. That's all for today. If you think my videos are useful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me at the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.